Hello and welcome to another ASP.NET Core coding tutorial from Round the Code. Now today we're going to be looking at Facebook and how we integrate Facebook login into our ASP.NET Core application. Come the end of this video you should be able to integrate your ASP.NET Core application and you should be able to log in using Facebook. Now for more ASP.NET Core articles visit roundthecode.com, subscribe to my YouTube channel at roundthecode.com forward slash YouTube and follow me on Twitter, it's at round the code. Now we're going to start with, um, we basically need a Facebook developers account. So we're going to go to that now. So what we need to do first is we actually need to set up an app on Facebook before we can integrate it into our ASP.NET Core application. So I'm on developers.facebook.com. You need a Facebook account for this and sign up. I've already done that, so I'm already logged in. So I'm just going to go to my apps. So it says at the moment I've got no apps created, so I'm going to go ahead and create one. So it says, how are you using your app? We're going to go for everything else. Select if you're integrating Facebook login, building an instant game or app, etc. So we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it Round the Code. And we're going to leave the email address as it is and a business manager account. Can't select anything for that anyway. So let's go ahead and create the app. Now we need to do the I'm a robot, select the traffic lights. There we go. Done the security check, so now it's creating the app for us. Okay, so that's our app created for us. The next thing we need to do now is to integrate Facebook login. So quite simply, we just go to Facebook login and click on the setup button. So that's all done for us. We don't need to do anything for this bit. What we do need to do though, is we need to go into settings. So this is sort of already set up. We've already set up the web OAuth login, so that's already enabled. What we do need to do though, is we need to set up a valid OAuth redirect URI. Now this will represent the host that you're running your ASP.NET Core application from, and it will be the host forward slash sign in Facebook. So I'll show you, we're gonna be running our application on localhost 8888. So what our redirect URI is gonna be localhost colon 8888 forward slash sign in dash Facebook, like so. We need to go ahead and save the changes for that. So that's all done for us. Next thing we need to do is we need to get our app ID and app secret. We're going to be integrating this into our ASP.NET Core application. So we go to settings and basic. So as you can see at the top here, we've got our app ID and app secret. We need to make a note of these. So we're going to open up Notepad++, plus plus. so our app ID, and then we need to show our app secret. And that's that done. We already set up our application in Facebook. Now we need to integrate it into our ASP.NET Core application. So I'm going to open up. Visual Studio. This is an ASP.NET Core MVC project that I'm going to be working on. So if you want to follow on at home, then just set up a default project with an ASP.NET Core MVC application. So the first thing we need to do is we need to integrate the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core authentication.facebook. So we've got Package Manager Console open, but if you don't know where it is, it's in Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Package Manager Console. What we need to do is we need to install the new get package. So we run the command install package, install hyphen package that is, microsoft.aspnetcore.authentication.facebook. So it's going ahead and installing our new get package for us into our application, which it's done. Right, so that's all set up now. So what we need to do is we need to do some configuration changes in the startup. So if we move that a bit bigger so you can actually see, move that down because we're not going to need that anymore. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add authentication. So we go up here and go to add authentication. So we need to specify a default scheme for it. Uh, 
and it's authentication scheme like so. So yeah, we're just using cookie authentication for this. It might be slightly different if you're using identity, like you're using identity server, but for simplicity, we're gonna use the cookie authentication for this. So what we need to do after that is we need to add another function called add cookie. And what this is gonna do is basically set up our login path. So this is basically where it's gonna redirect when it requires authentication. So we're gonna set this to account forward slash Facebook login, which we'll set up in a bit. And the last thing we need to do is obviously, remember we added our app ID and app secret, or we retrieved those, we logged those information. We basically need to now add it into our application. So we go to add Facebook. So that's part of the library that we just installed. And then we need to get our app D and our app secret. App secret, there we go. So we go into Notepad and copy them across. As I'd say, it probably recommended that you'd put that normally in an app settings file particularly if you've got different environments, particularly if you're using different applications. But for this demo, we're just going to put it in the actual code. So that's that done. And the last thing we need to do is we basically need to add the fact that it's using authentication in our application like so. Right, so to demonstrate this, we're going to go into Home Controller, and what we're going to do is at the controller level, we're basically going to require all actions to be Basically, they need to be authorized, so they need to be logged in before people can actually access it. <clears throat> so quite simply, you just put the uh, authorize attribute up the top like that, bring in the namespace. But we want to override it for the login, sorry, for the home page. So the home page, basically, when we load up our application, it won't require the user to log in. So what we can do with that is we can just quite simply put allow anonymous, like so. OK, so what we're going to do now is we're going to set up our, face, our login page. This will basically redirect the user to Facebook. And then we also want to redirect the user back to a response page. And what that response page will do is it will basically output all the data that we're getting from Facebook. So we're going to go ahead and create a new controller. And we're going to call it account controller. So let's go ahead and do that. Controller class empty, press add. Okay, so we've created our controller here. We're going to create a couple of attributes up here. The first one is we're going to allow anonymous. We want everyone to be able to access the login page. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to actually log in if they're not authorized to do so. And we're also going to set a manual route of account. So we don't need the index here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our Facebook login. So we're going to call it Facebook login. So first things we need to do is we need to set up some authentication properties. So this will basically just contain the URL for where we want our users to be redirected once we're logged into Facebook. So we're going to set it with redirect URI equals URL.action Facebook response. And Facebook response is what we'll create in a minute. Is that done? So the last thing we need to do is we need to return a challenge. So we pass in the properties as one of the parameters, and then we just use the Facebook defaults authentication scheme, which we got from the NuGet package that we downloaded earlier. Okay, so that's our login page set up. What we need to do now is 
recreate the uh, response action that we were just talking about. So what we do with that is we set up a read first. I'm going to call it Facebook response. And we're going to call the actual action Facebook response. OK, so just a note on that, that is basically going to correspond with the URL that's up here. So it basically knows to redirect it to this particular action down here, this response action. So we're going to get the result. So we do that by calling the HTTP context authenticate async and then cookie authentication defaults dot authentication scheme. So what we need to do as well is we just need to make this asynchronous. like so correct the uh, spelling mistakes there we go so now what we can do now is we can get some of the claims from the response and we can output it in a JSON format so the way we're going to do this is we're going to go to result.principal.identities first or default claims select and then we're just going to basically output the ones that we want to show on the page. So we're going to go for new. We're going to go for the issuer. The original issuer, the type and the value. And we're just going to return that in a JSON format, as I stated, like so. OK, so that's all the coding done. So we should be able to run our application now and actually log in through Facebook. Let's give it a go and see what happens. So let's turn it on. OK, so you can see that's running for us now. So let's give it a go and see what's going to happen. There we go. So our application is running. As you can see on the home page, you know, we don't have to log in for that because we added the allow anonymous attribute but if we click on the privacy page we should have to log in through Facebook here we go so it's doing that for us so it's basically saying my app will receive your name your profile a picture and your email address so I'm going to continue as I am and there we go we've got the response back so we've got some details up here we've got a name identifier it looks like a unique ID a name, a given name, well, a first name, and a surname. So that was a very simplistic way of integrating Facebook login into your ASP.NET Core application. If you've got any comments, please let me know, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Goodbye.